forecast for Cracker Joe east of Java at the Lampladder Cafe and Roasting Company in Richmond, Virginia on June 20th, 21st. And I just want to say it is hot as fuck. Fuck it's hot. Fuck it's hot. Okay, this is going to be the taboo theme. We're going to first we're going to talk about the seven dirty words. And we're going to talk about um, fighting words, nasty words that get people riled up. And we're going to talk about taboo subjects that people uh, might be afraid to address. And then that's pretty much it. So we're going to go, to, go around the table and introduce ourselves. And my name is Chris Martin. I guess I'm the ipso facto moderator slash host. And next to me is... Uh, Eric Monocle, comedian from Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, Josh Saucier. I was on the last one. And you're from Richmond. Virginia. Yeah, I'm from Richmond. Yeah. Jesse Thomas. I'm also from Richmond, Virginia. Okay, so first we're going to talk about the seven dirty words, which was pioneered by George Carlin. And for those people who are wondering what the actual original seven dirty words are, they would be shit, tits, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, and motherfucker. Does anybody have any additions that they would like to add to that? I think it's adorable that motherfucker made the list, but not fuck. I think well, that's awesome. Actually, there's a little history yeah, behind that. Oh, shit, tits, piss, fuck. Never mind. I think it's adorable that I don't listen well. Okay, well, this is, this is, um, this is from Wikipedia. In his comedy special, again, Carlin commented that at one point a man asked him to remove motherfucker because as a derivative of fuck, it constituted a duplication. He later added it back, claiming the bit's rhythm does not work without it. Carlin did not believe that tit should be on the list because it sounds like a nickname or a snack. <laughs> new, bit, new, new Nabisco tits, corn tits, cheese tits, tater tits. <laughs> In 1983's At Carnegie Comedy Special, Carlin expanded the list even further, reading a newly compiled list of over 200 dirty words from an oversized scroll. Wow. So does anybody want to add any words or take any words away? Tits doesn't seem to be that offensive anymore. No. no tits is not. Uh, uh, same with piss. I was going to say, piss is... It, Pissed off. Uh, that's one of those, I look at the list right now and it's the one that just doesn't seem to belong. Yeah. I would say more so than tits, even. Yeah. That gets on Letterman, O'Brien, those guys, mm -hmm. they, they know, they're pissed off. Yeah. Now, if cunt's on there, how come pussy is not on there? Like, pussy is cool to say, but you can't say cunt? I imagine that's the case, unless you're British. Yeah. Because the My British. earliest experience with pussy was in the 1963 movie Tom Jones. There's a scene where the squire, I think it's Squire Western, is running around in the countryside looking for his pussy. And of course, then later on, there was the uh, British sitcom, Are You Being Served? And there was a running gag in there about Mrs. Uh, What's-Her-Face uh, always talking about her pussy. So the British have a long and honorable or dishonorable tradition of pussy, using the word pussy. But cunt seems to have like died back a little bit because like the Australians, it's fairly casual. It's, it's not quite as us and shag, but for them it's not as, I think, offensive uh, yeah. as it is in America. It's so arbitrary here too. Like there are, there are words that are offensive to people and they've become offensive for various reasons. Uh, that one just kind of feels like someone's like, I want a word. I want a word that you're not allowed to call me. And they just picked one. Yeah. Well, douche used to be fairly offensive, and now, again, that's getting on late-night talk shows. It's a funny word. It is. Very funny word. It's got a double vowel. That's, that's comedy gold. Yeah. Well, it's usually attached to bag. That seems to be the... I like douche nozzle. <laughs> Breaks up the rhythm a little. Conveys the same effect. I like John Mayer. That's <laughs> yeah, that's, that's dull, You can say John yeah. Mayer, and someone will know exactly yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, Justin that, is a weird. That's name a callback. Oh, that's man. a callback. Justin Bieber. So, like, Fifteen-year-olds love him. My niece is fifteen, and I just kind of always assumed that she was not stupid. Uh, and she just jumped on Facebook. Uh, I added her. I was like, all right, you know, she's family. She can be on my Facebook. Um, and she posts nothing about how she's going to marry either Justin Bieber or uh, Edward the Vampire. Not Robert Pattinson, mind you. 
Edward the Vampire. She's undecided which one of them she's going to marry. You know what? I, I, I find it offensive and a taboo that you know who played Edward the Vampire off the top of your head. He was in Harry Potter. That made I, it worse. Um, yeah, that did not help your case at all. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Well, one of the things that um, that got kick-ass the movie and kind of stirred up uh, some trouble was they had a character in the movie. Of course, it's not, it doesn't relate to comedy, but just overall, I guess, Kathleen was the 13, 12-year-old, whatever 11. she was, 11. At the time, um, it was like, a, you know, I don't know, she looked like she'd be anywhere between 11, 12, 13, whatever. So I'm not good. That's why I always ask for driver's licenses. Um, I'm not good at judging, you know, young ladies' ages. Uh, you know, was her for use of the word. Uh, I think 13-year-olds have driver's licenses. Yeah. You know, like learner's permits. I'm decent about judging the age, ages as long as it's not Asian women. They they always look like they can be anywhere from 12 to 40. Um, I don't have any problem with it, but it's it's lazy. Like it, it's if I'm trying to get you to cheer because I said the word fuck, that's the same thing as me trying to get you to cheer because I asked where my ladies at, or said hey let's hear it for the troops and got everyone clapping before I told a joke. Any marijuana smokers in the crowd? Yeah, that's. You know what? I can, I can be funny without it, and if it's if it helps the pacing, because I do, I, I uh, say fuck a lot. So there are times where I'll try and leave it out just because I can, and I feel like maybe I'm using it too liberally, and it detracts from it. I don't say a lot of other things unless it's the punchline. I have one punchline where I tell everyone they're a faggot if they love Twilight, essentially. Uh, and there's no other way I can say that and have it still be funny. I actually, I tried once, I was like, you're all gay, and it wasn't funny. It needed the offense to be remotely humorous. Um, I pretty much subscribe to the theory that we're all adults, and we can talk about anything like adults. Um, I've, I've worked with some comics that uh, do 15 minutes of fart jokes, and it makes me want to put a gun <laughs> to my head. And they walk away and they're like, well... I'm family friendly. No, you're you're fucking stupid. That's what you are, and I hate you. Um, yeah, just because you use dirty words doesn't mean you're a clean it, comic. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I just you know again, I, anything that I could see my father saying to me when I was eight, uh, I feel has no business on a comedy club stage. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're working the state fair. That's something different. But, yeah. And I've just I've heard comics before, like Josh was saying. I, I, there's one comic I heard from New York that uh, would his punchlines were his jokes were just horrible. They were horribly crafted. They weren't funny, but he would throw in "fuck" every third word, and the audience loved him. I just remember thinking, like, this is this guy is, is really making a mockery of what we do. Um, that sounded really elitist. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, I don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm fine with that. I guess my, my philosophy would be to sort of use it as like a, my philosophy is it's sort of like a flavoring or a whatever that, uh, or herb or whatever you want to call it. And you kind of sprinkle it in to add flavor, but you don't want to overdo it, run it in the ground, whatever. And um, so, you know, I've, I've occasionally used, I've used the C word once or once in one set. Um, but that, and then I guess I've used the kick, well that's Relates to more like fighting words. I've used the kite word. Whoa! That was a Chris. That that was like that was to make a point. I don't know if it's people okay. can see Josh Saucier or not. But he <laughs> might be offended by that. I don't understand that word. I don't know what it means. You're not Jewish anyway. It's like no. <laughs> Like, well, oh, we said this. That before. was almost more offensive. Yeah, that I one said that before. I said, I said when, the SS, when the SS knocks on the door and gases, and it's like, they're not, they're not going to be uh, yeah. like, making them. Uh, he's only so going to be like, so oh, you're, so your mother wasn't Jewish, so you're not really yeah, Jewish. Exactly. You so can go. Here's how Jewish Josh me. is. Josh is so Jewish, he writes all his jokes in an attic. <laughs> <laughs> Now there, that, that relates to the taboo subject. <laughs> it's the Sorry, rest I, of skipped Josh a, I skipped Break. a couple. Too soon. <laughs> I skipped a couple steps, too, my bad. Too soon. Too soon. Uh, so then I guess my question to ask people is, like maybe we've kind of veered from one end of the spectrum to the other. In other words, Lenny Bruce had to fight to use the cocksucker phrase and all that. And now it's sort of like 
now everybody is you doing it, and they feel like because it's stand-up comedy, we have to do it. We have to be, use profanity. Yeah, I think it's it's those that cannot write a joke and a punchline feel they need to instead of make people laugh, they need to shock them on stage. They're going to shock them into laughing, and you know that's just motherfucking cost sucker and ridiculous. My opinion. Uh, I think. There are times where it feels stupid and cheap. It's just like you didn't write anything, you're just yelling. If you use it too much, it's not shocking, so there's no point. You're not going to shock any, you know, no one's ever watched Dane Cook and they're like, that guy said fuck again. I can't believe he said that. Um, it's hard, especially, if, you know, it's easier when I, I know the people on stage. It's hard sometimes to gauge what they actually mean and what their intent is. But I don't care what, the, what words they use as much as whether they're actually being offensive. You know, if your punchline is, you know, you, you say kike in a punchline, and it's a funny joke, that's cool, it's funny. Funny funny trumps everything else. Uh, but I remember at the Clash of the Comics, there was a guy who uh, got about three minutes in, and he was doing all right, and then for some reason, he just uh, he started telling, like, terrorist jokes, except they weren't jokes, they didn't have any punchlines. Uh, he just, he went on a two-minute rant about uh, how the filthy ragheads were destroying everything, and... He, did, he couldn't even get, like, a cheer. Everyone was just like, what? And there was no punchline. It was the only time I can remember watching someone on stage and actually being offended and disturbed by what he was talking about. It was really weird. Wow. Yes, uh, that was a fun <laughs> night. That guy was was a treat. Uh, no, I, I think that... Uh, I think there's definitely... It makes things easier when you use foul language. I don't. I can't speak for everybody. I know I was raised essentially speaking like a sailor. Like it wasn't. My parents never tried to conceal that they were cursing from me. So it, to me, it's very normal. I, I drop a lot of curse words in my everyday language. Um, you know, I. Yeah. I don't know. I, I. To me, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna struggle to write something funny, that's clean as well. I'm gonna. I'm going to focus on funny first. And if it happens to be clean, that's great. If it's not, deal with it. So I already know the answer to this, but we discussed this earlier, so I'll ask it again. You don't have a clean set and a quote unquote dirty set? I, no, no, I don't. Um, you know, it's probably a horrible mistake, but I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think that what I do necessarily is incredibly dirty. I think it's, uh, every time I try, every time I say something dirty, I always try and wrap it up in innuendo so that uh, I'm not saying you know this guy's drilling me in the butt it's something more to the point where you could I mean if you think if you think to yourself oh that guy's drilling him in the butt you get exactly what I'm talking about that is what I meant 100% of the time I meant it dirty I can guarantee you that 100% uh, uh, of the time you meant a dude was drilling you in the butt too yeah yeah that happens uh, far too frequently <laughs> not that that's a bad thing no 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 that's how you get work we, uh, we've made a drinking game about how many times you will uh, insinuate that you're oh, gay I'm on sorry stage. I meant to say I meant to use the sign for a phrase not that there's anything wrong with that <laughs> you're a method comedian you know it has to happen to you yeah exactly you. I'm, I'm like the Dustin <laughs> Hoffman of comedy uh I'll stay awake for days on end just so I can well, accurately feel what it feels like to be seat deprived and drilled in the butt by a guy. Just as long as you're not the Dustin Diamond of comedy, that's all. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. That, and you would have like a monster <laughs> cock. <laughs> and uh, an amazingly high viewed video on the internet. Yeah. But. Then you'd be getting more work maybe, who knows? That's very possible, yeah. That's, that's my TV credit right there. Um, I, I remember you telling, it, you told several of them, I remember at one point you told a new joke uh, somewhere that involved uh, picking up a woman at a bar. I think it was the role-playing joke the first time I heard it. Um, it may have been. And uh, I remember like turning to everyone at the table going, I, I don't know what he's talking about, but both people in this party are going to have a penis before this joke is over. Wow. Uh, thanks, Josh. That's why I don't do that joke anymore. It's incredibly predictable. Thank you, bud. That's, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I like it, but... Uh, it wasn't that it was predictable, except that it was you. Yeah. It's like, well, no, nah, there's no way this woman doesn't have a penis. It's Jesse. I think there's a lot of people that take themselves far too seriously up there. But, uh, I mean, you know. Oh, yeah, I treat like myself like crap on stage. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't feel good making fun of other people as much as I call myself uh, fat, poor, and lazy. Yeah, if I'm talking about uh, strippers being soulless whores, I think the least I can do is have a sense of humor about me being gay. Exactly. Which I'm not. <laughs> 
But <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay, we're gonna pause so we can get Mr. Winfield uh, situated. Playing back. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, how did it sound? Way off. It sounded alright. I heard it. Game on. I stopped both of them. So. Oh boy. So what do we do? What do we do? Oh man, your leg is hot. I need you to move that Thank to the you. side. <laughs> So right now we're talking about the seven dirty words. It's got real sugar. And I guess we'll ask you, do you use them? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Uh, do you have like a clean app versus a, a dirty app? Right. Um, you know, no return. Are there any words in, on the list that you'd like to add? Sit next to the book. Mm. Uh, any words that you don't think belong in there anymore? Talk about fighting words. You know, I'm guessing fighting words is N things word. that will start a fight. Yeah, the N word, F, the faggot word. <laughs> the faggot uh, word. When did, I love, that, I love like, how you say that. Two, yeah. yeah. There are two F words. Jared did that like, as a, the punchline. You know, I'm sorry I said the fuck with a little kid, which is hilarious. <laughs> Every time you say it, that's awesome. So, uh, Everyone needs to start doing that. And I guess, you know, like, fight and uh, Right. Do you get a hood pass because you're a stand-up comedian? Can can you use these words casually? Uh, uh, we will also accept acceptable. It may not be acceptable, but I do use those words casually, mostly when driving. <laughs> uh, and then I guess then we'll get a little veer into taboo subjects. Is there anything that you want to talk about? Or right. We don't feel comfortable talking about it. So, Okay. Word them up, G. Well, well, I guess we're waiting for uh, Saucier. Or not! Let's just go ahead and start. Because you're, you're going to be the focus for a little while. Anyway. Oh boy. Great. Love it. Okay. Action. Taping. Yep. Okay, so we're back with uh, David C. Greenfield in the discussion. Yes. And we're going to catch him up to speed on the seven dirty words. Uh, any words that you'd like to subtract, add to the seven dirty words? Well, if you really consider offensive, like, you know, maybe Justin Bieber or. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is this for chicks? I think mean, you should take what is out. This for chicks? You can take out tits and piss. I don't yeah, think you can we, add anything we agree. to the seven dirty words. Well, I don't like I hate Justin Bieber. <laughs> we agreed on that. Those are no longer offensive. Yeah, no. But the ones, yeah, the rest of them. sucker, not really. Not too much either. Well, that was the one that Lenny Bruce went to jail for. When he, mm -hmm. his, his famous quote was, I just said it, I didn't do it. Mm. That was one Carlin was in the audience for, right? Yeah, he got arrested. Uh, he got arrested. Showing his ID. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You are a student of comedy. See, I just got this stuff by cribbing off of Wikipedia, but you actually know it. It's because I have read Wikipedia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you remembered it. From your, I think I, I saw it on VH1 or something. <laughs> so do you have a clean act and a dirty act? Yeah, uh, my dirty act is pretty much my clean act with a few, a, a few fucks thrown in, which is what probably Jesse already told you. No. Because he knows that's what I'm doing, or he knows when I'm doing bad. When I decide to put the uh, throw a fuck in those some of my words. Um, no, nah, I mean my act is. I mean, as most people who know me know, it, it's mostly a clean act. Crabs uh, is about as rough as you get. Really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's innuendo there with this, with you know, eating Indian, and uh, you know the thing about the car, the sandwich named the Kardashian. You know, and Reggie Bush eating it every night. <laughs> I think I have some stuff to explore with that. There's a lot of cunnilingus jokes. Yeah, I know. What's up? I didn't realize that. <laughs> Pro crabs, not so much. It's more of an STD thing. But, uh, I mean, it, it's not, it wasn't anything planned. Um, you know, most, to, I think with everybody here, there's no difference between their comedy and who they are off stage. Um, and so my decision to be clean was never really a decision. It was never a conscious effort. That's just always been, you know, I've never, I couldn't go blue if I tried. I wouldn't know where to begin really. Was, you know. 
So on the dirty meter, you're pretty much like in the same spectrum as maybe David Letterman and Conan O'Brien, those guys. Yeah, yeah, I guess. No more bluer than late night. Well, yeah, Just who? A big I mean, bear. Yeah, well, yeah, thanks. And who would? I mean, yeah. I mean, who knows? Those guys could probably. You never know if they could go blue or not. I mean, they do. Yeah, as far as their on stage uh, persona, that's. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't do that. I just, and it's not like it's a con. Like I said, it's not a conscious effort. It's just that's who you are. That's my style of of being funny. You know. So. You could be the Bob Saget of comedy. Go both ways. Just decide one day. <laughs> Screw it. But he was always blue. Always. Right. Not that. So, do you think it gets you more work? Being relatively clean. Does it get me work? Yes. Does it get me more work? I don't know. It's because I'm, you know, I guess the same way if you're looking for uh, somebody to work in an urban room, you would call an urban comic. If you're looking for somebody to go in front of a dirty headliner, you get a dirty comic. If you're looking for somebody to get a, in front of a clean headliner, you get a clean comic. So, does it get work because of that? Yeah. Does it get more work? The only thing I can think of is maybe corporate stuff. And I've done a handful of those, and that was just for the sake of the fact that I don't curse. Um, or I'm not, I shouldn't say I don't curse, I do curse. But I'm not quote unquote dirty. So, that, I think that's. It's Judy Carter's emphasis these days, is like corporate work. She really pushes mm-hmm. that. Yeah, that's how she made her money. A lot of it to be handled. Yeah. And that's, if that's what you want to do. I mean, there's comics who don't, they would never want to do that. They, you know, maybe they want to stick to coffee houses and, uh, you know, where wherever the history's going or something like that, you know. Yeah, like Blake Midget would probably rather cut off his left, left testicle than, than, than the, uh, Right. In all fairness, that testicle. Yes, he's got to go. You might have to do that anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> Barely counts. I'm the surprised if that makes it through the scanner at the airport. Yeah. That is a large, unidentifiable mass. That is, uh, yeah, that is germ warfare right there, that testicle. Forgive us, Blake. Blake, incidentally, is in, couldn't make it. I was going to ask, is he gone? Is he's he in New York. York. He's in New York, York this weekend. He's still in Richmond. Oh, right. He's just in New York. He got his, he bought his plane ticket yesterday, apparently. He did? Yeah. So, so when is he leaving? Is he moving to New York now? Or? No, no, no from, he, he, he's visiting New York. He periodically goes to New like York. He, he was going to go for his right. birthday, but he couldn't make it, so he went up this weekend instead. But he just booked his plane ticket to Austin from here yesterday, which I don't, oh. know, I don't know when he's flying out, but unless he spent way more money than he had to, I'm assuming he booked it for okay. a little while in advance. That's cool. so. And Jason Velez is in Mexico, so he couldn't make it. He got deported? <laughs> No. He's, he's Colombian. I was going to point exactly. out, he's not from Mexico, but honestly, I don't think INS really cares. <laughs> as long as you're not here. <laughs> and Gregory Schmidt is off camping. Yeah. So, <laughs> he's camping, not. but he's definitely pitching the tent. <laughs> Boy Scouts joke. <laughs> hey, oh, oh. I'll be here all week. Greg may or may not touch children. Oh. <laughs> hey, oh. I'll be edited out and post. That I am kidding. He is a wonderful man and an excellent mentor and teacher and everything. He's a great person to have around children. With He's probably not going to listen hands. I, His boss is me. Yeah. That's a good point. So does anything have any, anybody have anything <laughs> more to say about um, Seven Dirty Woods? Legendary. Um, oh, uh, your thoughts on Lenny Bruce. You're probably the only one here that's actually read his book. How to talk dirty and influence people. So maybe you could uh, I will, uh, give us the uh, what's the word the uh, the four one one. No, no, the no. The, what's the the classic comics? The, the summary. Oh, the the uh, what are those black uh, books that they have? Look at American Craigslist or Cliff Notes. Uh, Cliff uh, Notes. Cliff Notes. Yeah, the Cliff Notes version of uh, how to talk dirty and influence people. Um, actually, very little of it had to do with his comedy, and much more as him as a person, and just. Uh, some of the stuff he would do and some of the consequences that they brought and uh, yeah, I mean that is it. Like a, very, very little had to do with the comedy itself. There was this a lot not more. not how to work. No, not even close. It was much more just uh, here's my life with the blemishes and everything. Would you think it'd be fair that you, you would draw a line from 
Lenny Bruce to Bill Hicks to Doug Stanhope, or is that? Honestly, I think you're giving Stanhope too much credit there. Okay. Um, Stock and George Carlin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Lenny Bruce, George Carlin. I Hicks. think the first three are legendary, and Stanhope, time will tell. But uh, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that had heard any of the first three that said, "I don't like this." I think it'd be it'd be a little difficult to find that in this day and age. I think Stanhope, you could probably find a good deal of people that are just turned off by him. I don't know enough about him you know, to offer critical judgment. So. That's just yeah. That's just, you know that's my opinion. I'm not a huge Doug Stanhope fan, but I just uh, I would never put him in a category with the first three guys. Okay. That's me. But like you said, time will tell. Yeah, time will tell. And I could end up being the the person that arrested Lenny Bruce for the cock sucking joke in the future. <laughs> It'll never work. Fuck it did. <laughs> but that's just you know, like you said, it's a conscious decision. From what I've heard, Stanhope's one of those guys who is only, is in it mainly for the respect of his peers. He's a comedian. What, comedian. From what people have told me, from what people who've been around him have told me, they, he has told them, I'm, I would rather be you know respected by my peers than anything else. Okay. You know? For what it's worth. It's kind of the boat I'm in, although we see how well that works. Time will tell. History will judge. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh. I guess we've run that into the ground. So now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Is anybody going to. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what that means. Um, so now. And there, there's a dirty word, um. I wish I didn't say that. I like. It should be like a. Um, uh, it gives me an electric um, shock every yeah. time I like how that. you said, like, in your description of, like, not using um. Yeah. The other one I use is so. That's like a, that's the kind of the new the new um the new the show new, um, the new um is like is, is so. Yeah, it's the Justin Bieber of uh, space fillers. I use uh, popular one then. Well, so I use, uh, Why does actually, nobody like Justin Bieber? It's like Jaden Smith. I read a thing about him. Nobody likes Jaden Smith now. Okay. What did the poor kid do? Then? It's, it's like you know, kick a ginger. I think it's sort of like he's like, Justin Bieber doesn't know what German is. Okay, so our next next uh, next segment is fighting words, and for that I'm going to read a little briefly from a New York Times magazine article about Zach Galifianakis. Galifianakis is especially proud of Apology, a two-part bait and switch routine he developed a few years earlier, several years back, performing at a dinner theater in L.A. Galifianakis delivered the following one-liner. When I get drunk, sometimes my southern accent comes out and I say words like y'all and nigger. It went over the way his jokes tend to, an instant of silence, then loud, slightly horrified laughter sprinkled with the occasional boo. Then it became something more. The audience was getting very upset. People in the crowd were yelling, you're a racist, Galfinakis told me. At this point, he interrupted his act to address a young black woman sitting in the front row. I said, I want to publicly apologize for this joke, Galifianakis told me. I brought the woman up on stage and I began to read an apology I'd written out to the tune of Michael Jackson's Black or White. <laughs> Halfway through it, another black woman came out from black back, black stage. <laughs> and we did an elaborate dance routine together. That was the close of the show. So your thoughts on... Fighting words, the end word, and this particular bit. Uh, that particular bit, bit, I think, is genius. I mean, Zach Galifianakis, uh, he's one of my favorite comedians just for the way he, he uh, his original voice. He doesn't, I, I remember reading stories about Zach Galifianakis bombing uh, in clubs in New York for the longest time. And, you know, I guess it's just a, a situation where your audience will eventually find you. He never went seeking an audience. His audience found him. He's been true to what kind of, he thinks is funny, and that's what I think is so great about Zach Galifianakis. So would you use the N-word in your act? Uh, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but again, it goes back to the, to the thing of, like, does it seem true coming out of my mouth? And, uh, Given your haircut, I would never Yeah, in my skin tone. Yes, yeah, yeah, so uh, mostly the haircut. <laughs> Very uh, American History X. Yeah, I would that's not. true. Now, you need more tattoos uh, 
uh, like uh, for that to, uh, <laughs> to be to do that. What is that? What is that? Sons of what's that Fox show? Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, you need more more tattoos to do to get the Sons of Anarchy. Right? Maybe then though, I would be more apt to use fighting words because then I could possibly yeah. Well, you would back look like up. you could fight. I know, yeah. right? Now that's the main reason I will only use a fighting word if I'm doing you know like a kid show where I know I can kick those little ass. <laughs> <laughs> they won't come out in the parking lot yeah. and beat the crap out of you. Okay, follow you out in the parking lot. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Saucier. Uh, I don't want to say I would in like, oh yeah, I'm going to run out tomorrow and, and start dropping everything I can into a set, but uh, I remember sitting at the Camel with you uh, one night, because uh, after uh, the South Carolina governor's wife was on The Daily Show, and I was trying to figure out a way to, to tell a joke where oh, I was going to have her say the N-word, and I was trying to figure out a way to... Make it more funny than offensive, and I couldn't come up with one. But yeah, I absolutely would have told that joke if I thought it would have, if I could have made it funny. So, as a member, as a member uh, of the of the of the podcast with a Jewish persuasion <laughs> or ancestry, or the, the, you have a Jew in the woodpile, as, as <laughs> George Allen would say. <laughs> How do you feel about the the, the woodpile is not really a good place to hide. <laughs> the K word. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Like occasionally, it, it gets dropped. In, in, uh, is that a fighting word for you, or you don't? No, care, uh, not the word. Certainly. Uh, I mean, I could see the the sentiment. I mean, I I could have somebody come to me like, "You a Jew boy," and you know that would be offensive, but not. Not because he said the word Jew, just because he meant it offensively. I don't understand the word kike. I don't. I have no idea what it means. I have no idea where it comes from. I'm sure I could look it up on Wikipedia. And it would, but, yeah, it's, it's got it, but I, I don't get it. I don't... You can call me a fluffer nutter. I, I don't... The word has absolutely... The word has absolutely no meaning, so... Just saying it isn't in any way even remotely offensive. Uh, but so, trying to offend me... Again, you could call me a fluffer nutter, and if you really meant it as like the absolute fuck you, I'd be offended. Well, how do you feel about Greg Schmidt doing that joke about Auschwitz um, and uh, what is it, the, the Mongolian? Uh... The all right, uh, the Welcome to Hitler's. Uh, he and I have been working on that for a while. I love that joke, and I keep like it's his joke, but I keep trying to to help him <laughs> make it better because it's not offensive. Everybody hears it and thinks, oh, it must be offensive. It's not. It makes a valid point. He, 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 he makes. He do you do you know it? I don't no, know. I, I, just, do. I, I could just picture like he, you saying that it's not offensive, but yeah. inside Brendan Fraser's in your head from uh, school, school ties going coward by, by the tree, wanting to fight people who make those remarks. Uh, he uh, he talks about uh, how Genghis Khan was just this horrible, horrible man who. who raped and pillaged across a continent and conquered the world and just absolutely was, was as awful as possible. And a thousand years later, no one cares. No one's like, oh my god, I can't believe you made a Genghis Khan joke. Yeah. He points out that he is, in fact, a restaurant on Southside. Uh, and he says, so, you know, what's, what does that mean? Like, do we forget this stuff? In a thousand years, are you going to go to your favorite restaurant and they're going to say, welcome to Hitler's? <laughs> and then he makes some puns that are mildly offensive. But that's not where he loses people. He loses people as soon as he says the word Hitler. Right. There is absolutely nothing offensive about saying the word Hitler, particularly when in reference to, like, uh, he's using it in jest, like, what, we should take Hitler more seriously? I think making fun of him is probably the most respectful thing you can do. Yeah, I think that's a clever joke, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, there's nothing offensive about it, but people hear it and they just go, they stop listening to the words and just go, oh, I can't believe he said that, he's awful. I think he loses people on the over six million served, that might be weird. Yeah, it's over six million served. Everything is oven baked. Try the buffet. All you can eat. All you can eat. But I think he's lost people by then. Like, I've, what's if he hasn't lost them by then? They're fine. There might be some groans, but they're like chuckle groans. Um, people laugh. I've, I've, I watch. People who don't like that joke, they drop out at the word Hitler. After that, if you're still with him, you're fine. Well, I think it's a case of you either laugh or you cry. Yeah. You really make a joke. So that's, that might be the case there. Uh, I, I would never use the word kike, but that's just because uh, in the comedy world, making fun of the Jews is career suicide. <laughs> 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 
they, they control own, the industry, right? They own a lot of stuff. <laughs> and uh, not to mention the media. That's a silver, that's a Sarah Silverman joke. Yeah, yeah, joke, right? <laughs> um, as far as the N word goes, I I think that bit is funny, and I give him uh, mad props for having uh, the balls to go through with it. I would never, ever, ever. Uh, say the n-word on stage because A, I, I can't fight, and B, um, you know, I just, uh, I don't see a reason to do this. Um, yeah, I think I would go with the term Toby. I think that's far less offensive. Canadian. Canadian works too. Um, it seems to me, didn't David Cross do something like that on Shut Up, you, you fucking baby. Where he's like, he kind of lost the crowd at one point and they were kind of died, died down. And he was like, you know what I hate? Fucking inward. And everybody was like, you know, oh shit, oh my god, what was he doing? And then he was like, they kind of realized what he was doing. He's like, nah, I just had to get you back. And so I mean, but that's, yeah, with the whole thing planned out, that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty genius and pretty ballsy. Um, yeah, I could, you know, I could never see myself doing something like that on stage. Um, just because it's, you know, it's not my place to, to I, I don't think I could ever, you know, personally, I don't think I have to be funny. It, it, you know, by being funny means I make fun of or belittle, you know, somebody else for that. Um, or an entire race or, or have to use, you know, something so derogatory. And, um... It kind of reminds me, like when I went to where I went to school with Lee Davis. Our my, our team name was the Confederates. Name dropper. <laughs> <laughs> what? Anyway, and uh, the uh, you know they use the Confederate flag in a lot of you know sports. Talking events. about Richard, I mean Robert E. Lee. Yeah, Jefferson Robert E. Lee Jefferson Davis. And you had you know the Confederate flag at a lot of events, and it, it really like you know it, it it pissed people off, and it really offended a lot of people, and I never heard it, you know, I didn't understand it, and then when it was explained to me, I was like, well, yeah, and then other people were like, well, you know, it's not hate, it's heritage, blah, 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 and my point with the whole thing was, look, if it offends somebody, I'm not going to do it at all. There's no need, I'm not trying to, you know, no pun intended, I'm not trying to wave the flag here. I don't, there's no purpose in me having to hold on to it, you know, if it's, okay, fine, if it's offensive, I won't do it, I don't need to do that, and so, that's kind of my stance on the, on the whole, like, N-word, or or any other type of thing like that. I don't. I don't need to do it. So I love the Louis C.K. bit where he talks about people and their political correctness in the in the use of the N word and how he hates the N word, not the actual word, but when people N-word. say the N word because a, like a newscaster will come on and be like, a fight broke out after you know a local man called another local man the N word. He's like, now you're just making me say it in my head. Right. He's like, just, <laughs> he's like, well, we That's know funny. what you're what you're implying. Yeah. Right. He had to say the N word. That's funny. I, um, uh, it doesn't always have to be the words either. I, uh, I remember, um, Marquise getting really mad at me at Europa for, uh, telling the joke about how, uh, I don't want my baby to be black. Um, which, uh, he, I think he was offended by it because he didn't get, he just heard me say, I don't want my baby to be black and thought I meant like that would be horrible or whatever. And it was a joke about I, it means I was cheated on. Um, but yeah, I don't do it anymore. I was like, you know what? I I really offended somebody and it wasn't funny enough to just, like, even if he misunderstood it, that's not his problem. My job is to make them understand. And if people are misunderstanding me and being offended, uh, I either need to figure out a way to do it better or not do it. Like, there's no point in offending them, especially if that's not the point. Yeah, I remember that. I think he kind of riffed on. He talked about that for a while before he sort of. Yeah. Yeah, he spent about three minutes uh, calling me gay, uh, (laughs) which was actually pretty funny. Well, that's kind. There's a little irony in that, I guess. Uh, And then he he tried to get Corey Marshall. Like he turned to Corey Marshall in the audience and was like, "Yeah, what did you hear what this man said?" And Corey's like, "I hope his baby's not black either." Marquis just laughed and let it go. Well, Corey gets up on stage and says, "You know, this is not an auction," so it's like. Corey still greets me like that. I run into him and he's like, hey man, 
How's that black baby of yours? And like we were discussing earlier, uh, uh, at um, Refried Comedy at the Aztec Grill, Odyssey Michaels was talking about the uh, uh, Saborni, uh, how do you pronounce the woman who's from Precious? Precious. Yeah, he just said Precious. Right. Well, the, the he made no attempt at Morbidly obese actress, Gaborni Sabade, and he called her a silverback gorilla, which you know, he can get away with because he's black, but I doubt there are many white people. Oh, I thought you meant he could get away with it because he was fat. No, okay. he, he's skinny. Yeah. I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. Or a six foot Swede. Knowing uh, Odyssey, I would guess that uh, I would guess that he probably didn't say that because she was black. Probably more just because that's a big animal. Yeah. I don't think it necessarily had to do with the fact that she was black. But you're right. Had you said that, we would have all looked at you, especially given your history with the Aryan Brotherhood. We would have all <laughs> looked at you and been like, "It's yeah, yeah, blood in, blood out." You can't see the tattoos on the podcast, but they're there. <laughs> it's nice Meanwhile, play. Silver's video, everyone's like, "What?" It's meta. Yeah, I made I made a joke about it. Monique being a uh, uh, you know in a werewolf movie, and she was shaving her legs. That's you know that has nothing to do. With no, it has nothing to do with her being black and everything to do with her being disgusting. Hairy leg. <laughs> uh, I make a joke about uh, See, black not racist, being slimming. Yeah, yeah, you well, can look at Oprah. Sex is honest. Which isn't that funny, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't think I, I, no one has ever seemed to be even remotely offended by it. Well, Galifianakis in this New York Times article said that's one of the great things about comedy. We can and should say the things that other people aren't supposed to say. If we didn't do that, if we didn't push against those limits, we'd just be standing around on stage and yelling. Some of us are just standing on the stage yeah. and yelling. <laughs> what percentage? That's what I want to know. 17. One. 17 percent. Okay, well then, Richard Pryor has, a, um, after years of using the N-word, his, I don't know what it is, be, his yeah. final statement was, and this is from Ebony Magazine, February 2007. In the 1970s and 1980s, the late Richard Pryor tossed out nigger as often as his own name. According to Pryor, it was about owning the term, salving ourselves from any sting it might have had. However, Pryor, whose albums included That Nigger's Crazy and Bicentennial Nigger, said after a trip to Africa that he didn't see any niggers in Africa, and he never used the word during the performance again. Quote, I was sitting by myself in the Nairobi Hilton in Kenya, Kenya? Kenya. And I just looked around and it was like a voice said to me, quote, what do you see? And I said, quote, people of all colors doing things together. And another voice said, do you see any niggers? And I said, no. And the worse, and the voice said, do you know why? And I said, parentheses, whispering, no. And it said, there aren't any, end quote. For anybody who can't see it, I just want you to know that we are doing this podcast literally five feet from a sleeping black man. <laughs> And Chris is reading that very, very loud. So I just wanted to let outside, everybody just in, you know, asleep. just in case anyone's hey, walking Richard by. Hey, Richard Pryor said it. I didn't say it. <laughs> Richard Pryor said it in what? What year? Was Ebony it? Magazine, 2007. There you go. He had been dead for well, five years when he had said it. This is no actually. <laughs> I don't <I'm> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, Lenny Bruce did the bit uh, about saying the Specs. n-word. So he said the n-word over and over and over. And he said, "What I'm trying to do." He said, "By the end of it." Uh, it'll have as much relevance as I forget what word he said. And Dick Gregory was in the audience, and Dick Gregory immediately recognized he's like that guy's a genius. And so that's what he's trying to do. Like he said, take the sting uh, out of the word. And that's what if you you know you realize if you keep saying it, it will have absolutely no. But I disagree. Um, that was my question. I disagree. I don't think if I don't think not saying it. I mean it's. That's a word that's been around for God knows, as far back as you know anybody can remember. I don't think there's any less sting associated with it. So Bruce, quoting Bruce, he said, well, I was just trying to make a point 
and that is that it's the suppression of the word that gives it the power, the violence, the viciousness. I don't know that it's the suppression necessarily as much as it is the, uh, I don't know, the, the disposition of the person that hears it. You know? Uh, I feel like if you're at a clan rally and you're throwing that word out, it's not going to make a difference. They're, they're going to hear it like I'm, like I'm saying, Chris, how you doing? Oh boy, that's, that's crazy. It's going to be like a normal conversation. Uh, made sense in my head. But, uh, I know what you're saying because in All in the fam there, there are two different points of view about All in the Family. And one which was that, that Archie Bunker was an educational tool, and then the other perspective is that it just validated people's prejudices. Yes. You put that far better than I did, so I'm just going to say yes. That's exactly what I meant. Did you just say mega dittos? Mega tits. Mega tits? Mega tits. Cheese tits. Good job. That was a callback. It wasn't a funny one. Awkward pause, awkward pause, awkward pause. White man still sleeping. Dead air, dead air, dead air, dead air. I remember. Um,